Good morning. It's Friday, March 22nd, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, A Little More Light, Part 3, and our scripture is 2 Timothy, Chapter 3. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Although a quadrilateral has four parts, today's part three finishes this series. In thinking about experience, the assurance of salvation, and reason, God's gift to us mortals of being self-aware and drawing intelligent, ethical, and moral conclusions, the remaining two are tradition of the church, or doctrine, and scripture, God's word. For me, these last two are so intertwined, I find it impossible to separate them. The reasoning here is that God's Word, not exclusively the 66 books we call the Bible, but literally God's words to humanity throughout the course of time are that from which the doctrines of the church, traditions if you will, were born. Everything the church does from worship, benevolence, proclaiming God's love, mercy, peace, and righteousness, to baptizing and discipling, are extensions of holy writ. We do that to which Scripture calls and empowers believers. Paul's admonition to Timothy here is not only defining concerning Scripture, it's also the chief example of how doctrine or tradition and Scripture are hand-in-glove tools of God's Spirit who is the light and the power of God's will here on earth. Scripture tells us what's wrong and right and compels us to the right instead of the wrong. Such is the nature of Scripture's impact. It drives church tradition, the doctrines that guide and inform, and by the power of God's Spirit, transform human life into new life. This is the essence of church tradition. Not traditional acts such as observing a festival or hanging hats in the foyer, but direction, moving towards the light. By nature, I have always had an ambivalent, tenuous relationship with God's Word. There's this love affair with my Creator within me which aspires to be obedient to God. It's a hungering after his righteousness and thirsting for his will to be fully in control of Russell. But in the opposing corner lurks that human nature inherited from Adam, always willing to have a break from my responsibility to respond to the director of this symphony called life. And when that lurking Adam nature wins out, I become a wanderer more than a pilgrim. Scripture and the tradition of God's people from the time of Job's troubles until this very day are the evidence I can see of God's pull on my soul towards him. It draws me to a scary life, a life walking without sight, but rather in faith. It is this life that requires more light in the soul than on the physical path. That light comes best when scripture, reason, experience, and tradition move in concert within me, assuring, encouraging, directing, and correcting my ways. Experience, or the assurance of salvation, is what rekindles the courage inside me to put one foot in front of the other and keep on. Reason is God's gift that helps me mindfully reject dark enemies in favor of God's joys. This is my weapon in the hand against straying into the temptations that abound. Tradition, the way our faith family has lived in the experience of salvation and carried the sword of reason, is the well-beaten path blazed by that great cloud of witnesses, the God-following community. And scripture is like the shepherd of God's supreme authority of a love letter to whosoever will join him on that great adventure of marching to Zion, journeying on to that place of still water which restores my soul. For you today, it's a dark world out there and God has provided all the tools you need to keep moving towards the light and sharing that light with others along your way. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.